morning. It is wonderful to see everyone this morning. We are so thankful for your presence here with us today. We welcome those of you who are here with us in person and those of you who are joining with us online. We are thankful for all of you who are with us this day. I have several announcements to bring to your attention this morning. We are in great need of greeters and ushers. So if you are interested in doing that, you may sign up on the round table in the welcomes area, the commons area. Those sign up sheets are out there. So please take a moment and stop by and sign up if you would like to help in this very important way. There are also pledge cards on the small table where the offering plate is. Um, if you were not here last week and were not able to turn in your pledge card, we would happily accept that today. Um, if you did not get a pledge card, there are extras on the table. There are pledge cards for families. There are also pledge cards for youth and for children. So I would encourage you to pick one up and to um, prayerfully consider making your pledge to the life of Eastminster so that we can continue to do God's work here in this place. The Women's Circle will meet this Thursday at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary, so we hope those of you who are a part of that will come and join in. Our Eastminster youth will be meeting next Sunday at 5 o'clock here at Eastminster. We have invited the Fountain Inn Presbyterian Youth Group to join us and will be led by our Presbyterian Youth Council, of which Max Gassner is a member. Because we are unable to have our fall retreat this year, our Youth Council was looking for ways to still get involved. And so they are doing something new outside of the box this year, and it's called PYC on the Road. And so they are going to come to us and provide a two-hour program. The theme that they have chosen for the year is Behind the Mask, uh, which I thought was very fitting. Um, but the mask that they are talking about um, is what are those things that we use to hide behind that keep us from being who God calls us to be. And so we look forward to welcoming um, Fountain Inn with us next week and our youth as well as Youth Council. So um, our youth need to be looking out for more information, but I hope that you all will be here. It will be a great opportunity. And today we also have something big to celebrate in our congregation. Elizabeth Owens and Hunter Baker became engaged yesterday. So that is so exciting. So we want to celebrate with the Owens family um, this exciting time for them. Um, we celebrate with Elizabeth and Hunter and the days ahead. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Any prayer concerns that we want to make sure that we share? Yes. Uh, just prayer for Barry and Amy Campbell dealing with COVID. Yes, Barry and Amy Campbell are both dealing with COVID. Any others? Well, this is the day the Lord has made, so let us prepare our hearts as we worship God. Please stand for a call to worship. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to keep, and a time to give away. This is a time to be open to the unexpected. This is a time to turn again to the Spirit's leading. Let us worship God.
God's love has been shown to us in Jesus Christ, yet we sometimes live as if that made no difference to us. Let us confess to God as we join together in our prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our God, we confess that we have not always lived for you. You have invited us into new life, yet we have closed our eyes and ears and hearts against that invitation. You have shown us the way to love, yet we have chosen too often the path of uncaring. You have called us to the ministry of reconciliation, yet often we find ourselves tempted to turn away from others. You have challenged us to generosity, but many times we would rather keep to ourselves. Enter our lives, God, once again. Release us from the bonds of self-centeredness. Create in us a renewed openness to your love, that we may share your love with others. Amen. In Isaiah 43, we read, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you will walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. You are precious in my eyes and honored. And I love you. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I would love to invite the children to join me. I'm not sure if we have any little ones today, but this. All right. So this week, we have a special week, a special day, and many of you probably already know the day that is this week. This week we celebrate in our country Veterans Day. And Veterans Day was always an important day in my family. There we go. It was always an important day in my family. My Uncle Billy, my great uncle, was a veteran of World War II. And Uncle Billy was a, 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 prisoner of war, a prisoner of war in World War II. And back in those days, um, we didn't have text messaging or phone calls and all that, that they could know that he was okay. But um, my mom used to tell me the story that they just assumed that Uncle Billy had passed away. And... And it was months and months and months. And on a Sunday after church, they looked out and saw him walking down the driveway. And they didn't know that he was coming home um, and what a gift that was. Um, and so today, as I've been thinking about it being Veterans Day this week, um, I not only give thanks for my Uncle Billy and my Uncle Frank who served, but I give thanks for those among us. So do we have folks here in our congregation who are veterans? If we do, I would love for you to stand up today so that we can honor you and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful for the men and the women who answer a call to go and to serve, to put themselves in harm's way to lead their families, to defend our country in times of trouble, um, and we pray for them. We pray for them each and every day. I hope that you do. I hope that you pray for our people who are serving still today, because there are people still serving today all over the world. But today we give thanks, especially for those among us here in our Eastminster family, whether you're worshiping with us here or online, um, we give thanks for you. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for our country. We give you thanks for the people who have stepped forward and who have answered the call to serve. We give you thanks for those in our family here at Eastminster who have served, who have fought, who have left their families. We give you thanks for their safe return. We give you thanks for the love that they have shared. 
Be with all those who serve, keep them safe, protect them, and bring them home safely to their families as well. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Uh, both an Old Testament and a New Testament reading this morning. So first of all, here selected verses from Genesis 19. Two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he said, Please, my lords, turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night. And they said, No, we'll spend the night in the square. But he urged them strongly, so they turned aside to him, and entered his house. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or else you will be consumed in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and left him outside the city. When they brought them outside, they said, Flee for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the hills, or else you will be consumed. And Lot said to them, Oh no, my lords, but I cannot flee to the hills, for fear the disaster will overtake me, and I die. Look, that city's near enough to flee to, and it's a little one. Let me escape there, and my life will be saved. He said, Very well. I grant you this favor too, and will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heavens, and he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife, behind him, looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Our New Testament lesson is verses from Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing in the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. A sermon entitled, Uncharted Journey, seems to be appropriate for where we are now. The presidential race is over, if not fully embraced. We have now been in the pandemic mode for at least eight months, and we do not know how much longer this will go on. We've had floods, wildfires, hurricanes, and tornadoes this year. We've had a change in pastoral leadership, and we live stream services. We definitely feel we are on an uncharted journey. When I first began thinking about the idea of uncharted journeys, I was wrestling with the challenges of getting older, and I began reading and reading and reading and having discussions with all kinds of people. 
And what I learned showed up in my ninth book titled Uncharted Journey. And I'm so grateful for God for putting these new lessons in front of me because they have been invaluable to me, especially this year. So now we'll begin with a story from Kain Hutak. Asher is talking with his father in the book, My Name is Asher. Asher, an artist, says, and I drew too, the way my father once looked at a bird lying on its side against the curb near our house. It was Shabbos, and we were on our way back from the synagogue. Is it dead, Papa? I was six and could not bring myself to look at it. Yes, I heard him say in a sad and distant way, why did it die? Everything that lives must die. Everything? Yes. And me? Yes, he said. And then he added in Yiddish, but may it be only after you live a long and good life, my Asher. I couldn't grasp it. I forced myself to look at the bird. Everything alive? Would one day be as still as that bird? Why? I asked. That's the way Rabono shall alone make his world, Asher. Why? So life would be precious, Asher. Something that is yours forever is never precious. Life is about loss. We experience all kinds of losses. When we're children, we love, we lose beloved pets and shoes and the belief that our parents know everything. The children in this church, this congregation, have lost school as they knew it. And they've lost regular contract with their friends. And as we get older, we lose family members and pets and friends to death. We lose our athletic abilities, if we ever had any. We lose our ability to get together with our extended family over the holidays because of COVID and the need to socially distance. We don't want to acknowledge that loss is part of life. Our culture encourages us to grieve quickly and to get over losses we experience. Something that is a significant loss to us, possibly a beloved piece of jewelry that had sentimental value, seems trite to others. But loss is real for us. All kinds of losses, big ones, little ones, but loss is still loss. And even our Lord Jesus experienced the loss of dependable followers who could stay awake with him and support him at his trial. He lost his life. Life is also about letting go. As a kid, we finally had to let go of our security blanket or bear or doll that we were so attached to. I even took a piece of my blanket to first grade until my mother discovered what I had in my pocket. And as a teenager, we let go of our hope that a certain someone will notice us and ask us out and will live happily ever after. At a certain point in our lives, we let go of the dream to write the great American novel or to be a star on Broadway or to be the perfect wife, husband, son, daughter, sister, brother, or grandparent. We let go of our expectations that life will always be sunny and trouble-free. And we let go of our ambitions that burn in our core when we were 20. Hopefully, we let go of our false images of ourselves. Lot's wife could not let go. She had to turn back to her old life, her old way of being her old form of security, her old friends, her old home. She could not let go and turn into a pillar of salt. Sometimes some of us, too, turn to pillars of salt. 
when we refuse to let go. Celebrities are prime examples of this refusal to let go. We see photos of some who've been famous for years, if not decades, and we don't recognize them because they've had so much cosmetic surgery. And we all know that, that many photos of celebrities are photoshopped. And truthfully, don't some of us wish that some of the recent photos of us pasted on Facebook or Instagram had been photoshopped as well? We're being challenged to let go of how church used to be, of how school used to be, of how dining out used to be. A magazine article for some other concepts of letting go, it said, I willingly surrender my attachment to what other people might think about me. I allow myself to keep an open mind to other interpretations of my religion and my personal spirituality. I let go of my attachment to the material things that surround me. I can take these or leave them. It's all the same. I give up the negative emotions that have created a comfort zone for me. They no longer serve me. I release my need to judge others thoughts and beliefs. These kinds of letting go remind me of Paul's instruction for us when he wrote in Ephesians, you were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to clothe yourselves with a new self created according to the likeness of God. How new might we become when we let go of our attachment to what other people think? What would our world look like if we could let go of our rigid interpretations of religion, race, politics, and personal spirituality? How wonderful would it be to let go of our negative emotions some of those feelings we've been lugging around for years. How different would our personal and communal world be if we didn't feel the need to judge others? Can we let go? Shall we become a new creation, especially as we move through 2020 and into 2021? Or shall we become a pillar of salt? And life is about growth. Other terms for framing our growth opportunities, our new birth, might be reappraising, reawakening, reconfiguring, rediscovering, re-inspiring, and renewing. The growth that can happen after loss, in whatever form that loss takes, can allow us to become something new. We might become that person we were before we learned to accommodate to all the people around us, parents and friends and teachers and pastors and bosses and neighbors, and we can grow into the person, the church, whom God is creating us to be. This growth is not always easy. As Paul so beautifully reminds us, here again his words written to the church in Rome. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast, of, we boast in our hope of sharing in the glory of God. And not only that, but we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let's face it, life has suffering laced into it all along our journey. We know about suffering, the pain of loss, the challenges of letting go, and we experience physical suffering in our bodies. And we suffer when we notice what is going on in the world. We suffer because people we love die or are suffering themselves. And we suffer because long-held dreams disintegrate. We suffer, and there's no doubt about that. But Paul suggests that our suffering is actually a gift from God because suffering produces endurance. Do you believe that to be true? When you think about some of the suffering you've experienced in your life, do you believe that it made you stronger? Can you endure other sufferings better because of what you have already been through? My oldest friend died several years ago from breast cancer, a six-year journey from her. And she experienced all the feelings that one does when fighting a terminal illness, in her case, terminal. And yet, I watched her deal with past traumas and issues that had plagued her throughout her adulthood. And she experienced an internal healing of her soul, even while her body was losing the battle. She died in peace. She had learned to, to endure and to live even while dying. She was not cured, but she was healed. And she taught me much about the art and practice of dying. So Paul says that suffering leads to endurance, and endurance produces character. You believe that? How many books have you read or movies have you watched where the protagonist deals with some traumatic experience only to emerge at the end stronger and with more wisdom and yes, more character than when the story began? Do you think the disciples developed more character? after processing all of the events of their walk with Jesus, including the crucifixion and resurrection? As a person of faith, you too are a disciple of Jesus, and so the same promises are yours, that suffering leads to endurance, which produces character. And Paul goes even further, he says that character produces hope. Hope. What a wonderful word. During this time of pandemic and post-election realities, don't we cherish hope? Wouldn't we rather embrace hope than despair? Don't we want to find people to be in our lives who help nourish our hope, our sense of adventure at this stage in our lives and in our history. Aren't we as Christians ambassadors of hope because of the reality of Jesus Christ in our lives? But hope is sometimes hidden from us. Our dreams for ourselves, our family, our career, our church, our country, or our faith fall apart. We can't do things the way we used to. We are anxious about what the future holds for us. We believe that no one will love us when we become freer as the person God needs for us to be rather than the person that other people expect us to be. We wonder what this congregation will look like next year or maybe even 20 years from now. And we live in the past or we fear the future rather than live in the present with all of its gifts and suffering and joy and endurance and frustration and character and love and fear and hope. 
Some of us curl up in a corner for no reason other than we lost hope. And when there is no hope, there is no life. And without hope, we give up our will to fight, to trust, to live. This journey of loss, letting go, and growth is all part of the plan God created for us human beings. We are born, we live, we die. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we know that life has even more to offer. I'll close with this poem by Edwina Gateway, which I'll read as a kind of blessing for us all on our uncharted journey. You are called to become a perfect creation. No one else is called to be who you are called to be. It does not matter how short or tall, how fast or slow you may be. It does not matter whether you sparkle with light or are silent as a still pool. Whether you sing your song or weep alone in darkness, it does not matter whether you feel loved and admired or unloved and alone. For you are called to become a perfect creation. No one's shadow should cloud your becoming. No one's light should dispel your spark. The Lord delights in you. Every movement of the Spirit within you. Unique and loved you stand. Beautiful or stunted in your growth, but never without hope and life. For you are called to become a perfect creation. This becoming may be gentle or harsh, subtle or violent, but it never ceases. It never pauses or hesitates. It is God's creative force calling you to become a perfect creation. Praise be to God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, as we do our um, pastoral prayer, prayers of people, I'm going to invite you to, um, there are points where you can do your own prayers um, in, in Charlie, and then we'll move from there. So it's called Daddy Prayers. But, so please join me in prayer. God of wondrous love, you have touched us and never left us in despair. You have held us in our grief and chaos. You have never deserted us. You paid us a visit, and your visit has never ended. You clung to us when we were given up for dead, and in life and in death, you raised us anew. This we know. This we experience. This is your word of assurance. God of wondrous love, touch us again in this time. Stay with us. Tender and compassionate God, we ask you to pray. You ask us to pray for all people. So here we offer our prayers for our world in need, trusting in your great love. Let us pray for the church. Gracious God, we pray for the church of Jesus Christ throughout the world. May your church be one in spirit throughout the world and one in witness to your saving love. For Christians are being persecuted for their beliefs, open the eyes, the ears, and the hands of others to protect and defend them. Let us pray for leaders of this church. Gracious God, lead our leaders, grant them your wisdom that they may lead this congregation in the paths that you choose. Give them patience that they may negotiate unknown waters. Give them delight as they serve this, your congregation, your people. Let us pray for those who rule. Eternal one, ruler of the universe, we pray for those who govern our land, our state, our counties, and our cities, and for people committed to their charge. Turn the hearts of leaders and people to you, that governments may seek the good of humanity and of all who suffer. Let us pray for the homeless, the hungry, and victims of disaster. You suffer with those who suffer. We pray to you for those who are denied what they need to live and those whose dreams have been shattered by war and disaster. Reach out and bring healing through the hands of your faithful people. Let us pray for the sick and the grieving. Comfort our human spirit. Grant your peace to those who are sick and those who grieve. Radiate through their lives with the light of your presence that renewed health and strength may be theirs. Let us pray for our enemies. We pray to you, O oh God. For those whose actions offend us most, and for those whom we have learned to fear and despise. Through your great love, make tender all hearts hardened by hatred and suspicion, and work your justice among us. Let us pray for ourselves. God of hope and new life, 
Help us wonder and be awed for the sacred and everyday miracles of life, to see the joy and abundant life you intend for us. Grant us your peace, peace which is not the absence of trouble, but the awareness of your guiding presence in all that we do. Holy God, make us the answers to the prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We worship a God of the Spirit, but there's a lot of tangible things that happen within that world of the Spirit. And part of the tangible things are the support of the church and its mission. So please think about the ways you will be able to support this congregation, and you'll see in the box different ways to contribute. And now let us celebrate with joy and give thanks. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. responsible and responsive wherever you are. You've been reminded that you are God's servant. And so go forth remembering that the one who calls and sends you also sustains you. And remember, because you were here today, you'll never be the same again. 
And now may the grace of God our Creator and the love of God our Redeemer and the communion of God our Sustainer be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.